again everyone I'm Dave Thomas and today I am building the Quad Goblin by New A Space Models and this Quad series uh, is a whole bunch of models that they've taken round rockets and made them square so there's a little bit unusual this is the first time I've tried one of their kits so I'm going to go ahead and open this up and we will see what they've got in here So let's check our instructions. Okay, so first of all, they've got some of these kind of divided into kits. All right, we've got some decals here. All right, the fins that have kind of come loose inside there, but that's okay. All right. um, this is what they're calling the sanding kit here and so it's got some sandpaper, emery board and then we've also got some applicators in here not oh, right here, okay alright, we've got a parachute kit Okay, our main square body tube and there's other stuff inside that so make sure you check for those um, it is pre-slotted so that's going to be handy okay it looks like we've got a motor mount tube there and another sleeve over that some more motor mount accessories here um, engine rings thrust ring engine clip and it's even got square launch lugs All right, we have a balsa nose cone. Been a while since I've worked with one of those. Okay, and then we've got a hybrid shock cord here and also some hardware for putting all that together. Um, looks like it's using these washers as nose weights. Yep, they are. Okay, and just go down through here. Make sure I'm not missing something. Okay, it looks like we have everything here. So I'm going to put most of this away and come back and we will get started. As with most model rocket kits, we're going to start with the engine mount. So just take this out of the package, take the sleeve off for now. And the first thing we need to do is measure a quarter inch from each end and make a little mark there. Okay. Just like that and then we're going to cut a little slot looks like about two to three millimeters wide or roughly eighth of an inch if you're non-metric okay so we'll take the clip out here and then I'm going to take my knife just make a little slit in one of those holes and that will become the forward end and our clip will just pop right into that. If it doesn't, just go ahead and give it a little bit more room. Okay, now we're going to slip the sleeve over. Now I'm not gluing anything yet. Um, we will here in a moment. But that's going to be at an inch from the aft end. So I'm going to go ahead and make another little mark right here. Okay, and then our thrust ring, which is also in this little package here. Okay, this is going to go in the forward end like this. Alright, so we just got everything nice and dry fitted here to make sure it works. And then once you've got that, you can go ahead and take some white or wood glue. Alright, I'm going to start with that sleeve there, and we'll just put a thin film around there right, I'm just going to pass this through it turning as I go to even it out and then you can just wipe away the excess glue there okay now for the thrust ring 
I'm going to apply the glue to the ring so it doesn't get squeezed down into the tube where it might interfere with the motor. Okay, I'm just going to make a nice even coating all the way around here. Okay, and then that can go back in where we had it. Okay, and that should be flush and level all the way around. Alright, I'm going to set that aside and let it dry for a few minutes. Okay, now we need the centering squares here. Alright, and it says to cut them out, but they're already cut out in this kit. Alright, and we've got a little notch in one of them. Okay, and so we're going to get the Kevlar out here. Alright, now again, I'm going to dry fit this. So on the forward end, the one that has the little round notch there, that's going to go on here, and the square notch is going to go over the clip there. All right, and then the round notch is where our Kevlar line is going to go through, like that. All right, now this next part, they've got this heat shrink tube to go over the Kevlar line to protect it from the heat of the ejection charge. Um, you really don't need this. Kevlar is actually a whole lot more heat resistant than this is going to be. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put it on just so you can see how it's done, but really, you really don't need it. Alright, I just found an easier way to do this. Go ahead, remove the ring, tie your Kevlar on with a double knot there. You can turn that over if you like. Alright, and then we're just going to move it around there. And now you can go ahead and slide the ring on. Okay, so it's got its notch with the Kevlar there and the other notch with the engine clip right there. Okay, and this is supposed to be at that other quarter inch place here. So it's going to go just right about there. Okay, so now we can go ahead and I'm going to use a heavy amount of glue. In fact, we can even push this forward a little bit again. I'm going to put this right above where my mark was there. We're just going to give a fairly heavy bead around, all the way around there. Because this is also going to lock the Kevlar into place. Okay, we're just going to bring that down a little bit. Okay, and then I'm going to bring this up into the glue. Okay, go ahead and smear that glue around and onto the Kevlar. Come around this way as well. Alright, now the excess glue is not really a problem, but we don't want it on the edges here, so go ahead and take that off. Alright, I'm going to let this dry for just a few minutes, and then we'll come back and do the other ring. Now the glue has dried a little bit, at least enough so it's not going to come undone there. I'm going to go ahead and put the little sleeve on here. As I said, this really isn't necessary. Kevlar is very heat resistant all by itself. Okay, and they recommend using a heat gun. I don't have one here. Um, I just use a lighter set to low. Alright, and then just briefly wave that around underneath, around it. Okay, you may have to come from a few different sides there. Just be careful that you don't burn up the engine mount or something. And don't leave this in any one place for a long period of time. 
Alright, so that's done. Alright, now for the other ring. Okay, this one's got a deeper slot on it for the engine hook, and this is so that you can move the engine hook out of the way. Alright, and this is going to go on and slide to our other little mark there. Okay, so I'm going to bring that down. I'm going to use a little less glue on this one because I'm not trying to hold down the um, Kevlar. And I also don't want to get this on the hook. Okay, so first I'm going to go find my line there. Get that even all the way around. And then I'm going to once again just smear this around into a fillet. Keeping it off the hook. And if you want to, you can use the little applicators that they included to do this part. Okay, now once again, we don't want anything on the edges, so if you've got glue up there, just wipe that off. And now this whole thing is going to dry. While we're waiting for the glue on the motor mount, we can come to the fins here. And you can either use the sandpaper that came with the kit, or if you have your own, that's fine. Um, but the first thing I'm going to do is just stack my fins together here. And I'm going to group sand all the edges. I'm using a, a medium grit, 150 grit sandpaper here. And so you can just put on a flat surface and just drag it across the sandpaper. Okay, and basically you're doing this till you get the soot off. Um, this will also get rid of these little nubs here from the, the cutting process. Alright, now be careful here, um, just barely sand that as we don't want to take down the uh, fin tabs there. So be really careful with that. Alright, and then we'll do the tip edges there. Okay, and then to do the surfaces and the edges, I recommend using a sanding block. Okay, which can just be a block of wood like this. Just something that gives you a mobile flat surface. Alright, the first thing I'm going to do is just do the faces here. Okay, now we we'll want to continue this with some finer sandpaper, but the, I want before I do that, I'm going to round the edges of the, the leading and trailing edges here, as they recommend in the instructions. So first I'm just going to kind of knock down the corner edges there. Okay, and then I, as I continue to go, I'll just kind of roll my wrist a little bit here, and that will impart the curvature. Okay, so if we check these frequently in cross section, I'm going to try and keep them even. I'm going to do the same thing with the other three fins off camera and then come back. I have my initial sanding done and now I'm going to apply a sanding sealer to the fins. And <clears throat> this is something that in the instructions is optional and they don't have you do it until after the fins are attached. I prefer to do it before then so I don't have the body tube in the way. Um, I am using a 
polyurethane based sanding sealer here. And what you'll need for this is a piece of corrugated cardboard like this that has the holes in it. Now in this case I'm using just a, a cheap rocket mount that I make for my classes. And you'll need some straight pins like this. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is just poke a straight pin into the root edge of each one. You don't have to go very far and be careful that you don't poke your fingers as you do it. But this will give you a handle that you can work on without getting the sanding sealers all over your fingers. Now for applying the sealer you can use a paintbrush. Um, I just use an applicator like this, um, similar to the ones that come with the kit, and you can use those as well. But just this way it's disposable, I don't have to worry about cleaning the brushes. Okay, so now what I'm going to do here is while I'm hanging on, I'm just going to give this a coating. And you can be fairly thick with it, um, especially since we just gave it just a, a brief sanding here. All right, but this is going to fill in the grain. It's also going to lock in the little fibers that get raised up when you sand this so that later when we sand it again those fibers will not keep propagating themselves but we'll be able to sand them down. Okay, Don't forget the edges here. Now do not do the root edge. We want it nice and porous and grainy so that the glue holds better. But you do want to get right around it. Okay, now here's where the cardboard comes in. Oh, now i got a dry spot there. Let me give a little more. Alright, so here's where the cardboard comes in. Is Now we just take these and put the little straight pin in one of the holes and it'll allow that to dry. Um, and if it drips, make sure you have something under here. I've got several layers of paper towels. And I'm going to continue this with the other three fins off camera. Now while I've got my sanding and sealing materials out here, I'm going to go ahead and work on the nose as well. Now, in the instructions here, um, it shows that we're going to have to round the corners here in order to get this to fit into the tube. So let's take our body tube here and just see where we're at. And indeed, they are right. Okay, so this is going to need some sanding all the way around. Uh, here again, a sanding block is going to help. Um, you can also use the emery board that they had there. And that will be especially good for rounding the corners if you need to. Okay, I'm just going to come back to my sanding block here. Now normally you sand with the grain, but it's, it's going to have to go against it here. Okay, I'm just going to work my way around each face there. Now at this point I'm not doing the main part of the nose cone, I'm just doing the shoulder. going into the corners there. Okay, still have some time to go. Um, I'm going to go off camera since it's going to get really boring for you to watch me sand this shoulder. And when I come back, we'll take a look at the nose cone itself. Alright, so now I've got this sanded down and I've rounded off the corners here. And when we put this in, it fits. Okay, now we do have some overhang here and I can also see some areas where maybe machinery bumped into this while it was being packaged or something like this. And so you can go ahead and round this whole thing or at least sand it. And leaving it in the tube here for just a minute so I can hear it just when it touches. So I don't want to do a lot of sanding on the tube itself, but I do want this to be flush. Okay, 
and, and here I'm still using the 150 grit medium sandpaper. Okay, now it's also up to you whether you want to keep the, the nice squared off edges here or if you want to round those off. Um, and in fact, if you want to, you can round off the nose cone here at the top. I'm going to leave it all square because that's kind of the whole idea of the rocket. Okay, check this again. And we may want to fine tune it later on. Okay, um, but now I'm going to apply the uh, sealer, sanding sealer, man, I couldn't, lost a word there. Uh, apply the sanding sealer to this as well. And then um, after I've had a coat or two on that, I will go ahead and sign, uh, sand this with fine sandpaper. Okay, but I'm going to do that part off camera here. My engine mount is dry enough to handle here. And so the first thing I'm going to do is pass the Kevlar shock cord all the way through so that it's not getting in the way. Alright, this little piece hanging here I'm just going to cut that off a bit. Now Kevlar does not cut easily. Alright, that'll just get that out of the way. And now I'm just going to dry fit this first of all and make sure that we're not going to have any problems with it. This is why you want to make sure it's completely glued first. Okay, and we do have a problem in that it's a little bit out of square. I'm just going to try and force it here. There we go. Okay. Um, and that's something, hopefully you're watching this video all the way through before you start building. Okay. But the glue is still fluid enough to do that. So now if I put this in, let's try again. Okay, it's pretty snug, but it's going. So what I'm going to do here is just take a little bit of sandpaper, and I'm going to spring that edge down a little bit. Try this again. Okay. It's still snug, but not as. And that should be okay there. Okay, so according to the instructions, we're going to put a liberal bead of glue about two inches in, um, basically up just above the uh, fin slots there. And again, you can use the applicators that come with the kit. Um, I'm going to use this long one here. Okay, I'm just going to pop that in there and just rotate that around the inside. So if we look inside there, you can see a nice layer of glue. And now I'm going to go ahead and put this in. And when we're done, the motor mount should be flush with the body tube. Just like that. Okay. Now I'm going to take the shock cord here and put it back up through the body tube. There we go. Okay, and go ahead and pull that all the way through. Make sure it does not get hooked on the engine hook. Okay. All right, and now I'm going to take my applicator here again and at least get into the corners there with some glue. Now I'm going to leave that corner undone so I don't have a chance of getting 
glue up on, on the uh, clip there. And we can just kind of smoosh this around and then I can use the handle of this one. You may have to break off one of the heads if you're using the ones that come with the kit. I'm just try to make fillets out of these. They don't have to be pretty. They're inside there. Nobody's going to see them. But that will just help keep that engine mount in place. Alright, we're going to let that dry again. Since we're still waiting for glue to dry on the motor mount and the sanding sealer to dry on the nose and the fins, I'm going to go ahead and assemble the parachute here. So open up the parachute kit bag. Oh, that's a nice little parachute knot there. You can try that if you like. I just use double knots. Okay, so we're going to open this up. Right, this is a little bit different from other ones. So it's already pre-cut. It's got holes punched in it. Um, but now they're using these stick-on reinforcements here and the parachute line will actually go through the folded reinforcement rather than through the uh, holes here in the parachute. So this is new to me. We'll see how it goes here. All right, so let's go ahead and open this up. And this looks like it's pre-cut into three lines. We'll just carefully tease this open. And it is. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is put one of these on. And it doesn't seem like they're all that sticky. Maybe going through there and attaching to each other may help things. Alright, so it looks like they're just kind of laying this in place first of all. These are really long shroud lines. Alright, so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to lay it across there and then I'm going to fold this over onto itself like that. And then I'm going to do the same thing to an adjacent one. that in there. Right, we'll place the line across there. And fold that over. Okay, and now I'm just going to tie two half hitches into this. Um, you can do the fancy knot that they show in the card there if you like, but I found that this is sufficient for most parachutes. Um, the key thing here is try and keep it the same size. Oh, that one snaked itself away. Let's see if we can get it back in there. careful when you're putting this together. There we go. It does like to come out. Okay, another two half hitches here. Just like that. Okay. So that seems pretty strong there. I'm going to do the same thing now on the other two. So I'll have a loop between these two and a loop between these two. I'm going to do that off camera and come back. I have all of the shroud lines attached. And now I'm going to gather these all on one finger here. Okay, like that and like that. And then I'm going to hold the middle of the parachute here. And then I'm going to pull everything taut. Okay, 
Okay, now if all of your shroud lines came out the same length, all of the corners should be together like this. Okay, and I'm really tickled that this kit comes with a snap swivel. Because if you've seen my other videos, you know I'd, I love using snap swivels for parachutes and streamers and such. Alright, but I'm going to do it a little bit different than what they show here. So here they're basically just tying all the strings onto the snap swivel. There's actually an easier way to do this. So we've got the snap end here that has the clip on it. We don't need that at the moment. We need the swivel end and that eyelet right there. Okay, and I'm going to pass all of my shroud line loops through the hole there. I'm going to open up the loops once more. And now I'm going to pass the entire swivel through. All right, I'm going to pull those loops back down. And I'm still holding on back here um, in the rest of my hand so that these don't change length. And now I'm just going to pull that tight. Okay, and I'm going to come back to my parachute and make sure all those corners are still there. And they are. All right, so if that's where you want it, um, we're going to put a little glue on here. If it's not where you want it, then just loosen it all up and try again. Okay, we just want a little drop of white or wood glue here. And that'll just keep those lines from shifting on us. Alright, but this does a couple of things for us. Is The swivel itself um, can spin freely. And so as the parachute comes down, a lot of times they spin no, how, no matter how careful you are. Um, it tends to wind up the shroud lines and eventually it can collapse the parachute. So this allows some of that torsion stress to be relieved. But it also means you can quickly change parachutes in the rocket. Um, many rocketeers don't like to store their parachute in the rocket. They'll put it in a drawer or a box or hang them on the wall. And so you can just quickly snap this off the nose cone, put it away for wherever you want, um, and then on launch day you can come put it back on. Or if you decide you need a, a bigger parachute, or a smaller parachute, or even a streamer, it's easy to change out the recovery system. So I'm going to set this aside, let my little bit of glue here dry, and uh, we should be close to working on the fins and nose cones some more. Probably going to add some more sanding sealer. So the sanding sealer on my fins is dry. And now I'm going to use some finer sandpaper here. I've got 220 grit. And I'm just going to, first of all, just lightly sand all my edges again. Make sure their shape is good. And then I'm going to sand the faces here. Now you may find that the sanding sealer tends to clog up the sandpaper, so you may have to change your sandpaper fairly frequently. Okay, now I can still feel quite a bit of roughness here. And so you'll probably want to go ahead and give this another coat of sanding sealer and then give it a final sanding. I'm going to do this to the other three fins off camera and then come back. I've sanded down the fins again after applying the sanding sealer. And I did this in, in two sandings. So I, I did the initial with 150 grit and then went to 220 grit. Um, some people would like to put on another coat of sanding sealer, and that's fine. I'm just going to do the one here. And we're pretty much ready now to attach the fins. Now, in looking at this, I was a little bit worried that the sleeve there would provide an uneven surface for the fins, but it seems like the fins actually hit that and not the deeper part there of the engine mount itself. So we're not going to have any fins sticking up. So here I'm just going to apply a thin film of glue. All right, and then I'm going to put that on. And I'm going to bring it back up. I'm going to let that dry 
for about 30 to 60 seconds and let that get tacky. About a minute has passed and so I'm ready to put this back on. All right, just kind of squish that down well. And then the main thing we need to do is make sure that this is nice and perpendicular to the body tube. Okay, and I'm going to let that dry for at least 10 minutes before going on to the next fin. But I'll do the other three fins off camera. My fins have dried and my next task is to add the launch lugs here. And we want them close to where the engine clip is. So they can either go along this edge or along this edge. And according to our instructions here, okay, so at one and three quarters of an inch from the forward end, okay, so that's there. One and three quarters is going to be right here. All right, so the forward one will go there, and the aft one will be flush with the body tube down here on the bottom. All right, these are going to glue on with white glue or wood glue again. And just like the fins, we don't want to use too much here, they just get really sloppy. So we'll put some glue on here initially and then we can strengthen it with fillets at the same time that we do the fins. Okay, and I'm going to use the corner edge there as a guide. So there's one of them. Okay, take my excess glue here and use it for the other. Alright, that's going to go right down here. All right, now it's a little unusual, but we can still align these just like we would if this was a round body tube. Okay, so sight down them, make sure they're straight and in line, and they are. Okay, so I'm just going to set this aside and let it dry, and then we can come back and put the fillets on. Now that the glue has dried on the launch lugs, we can go through and do all of the fillets. And you can do all of these at once as long as you keep the rocket horizontal and level. Okay, so just run some glue here. Now that's going to be a little tight, and I'm going to go ahead and use a stick here. get into the launch lug. Can kind of make it a little fillet there. I'm just going to let this dry horizontally and we're almost to the point of putting the whole thing together. Here I have the nose cone painted and the main body of the rocket here has just been primered. And the primer really sets off a lot of the imperfections and such. And so it's good for showing you where they are, but maybe not so good that they're there. Um, this still needs to be sanded a little bit. 
Some people like to fill in the the uh, tube grooves here. Um, I may do that. I haven't decided yet. Uh, but I probably won't get around to final painting of this for quite a while as the weather has turned kind of cold where I live. So I'm going to set this aside for the moment and come back to our nose cone. Uh, and here we have this little parts package that we had set aside before. Okay, now this contains two washers that are used as weight. And then we've got the screw eye here. Now I've already kind of pressed in a hole here so I could put a stick on this to hold it while I was painting it. So I'm just going to use that as a starting point for my screw eye here. I'm just going to work it in. Okay, you really don't need to pre-drill it. It's pretty coarse um, and open wood. Okay, so now I'm going to take some wood glue and just put a coating on the screw part here. Okay, it doesn't need to be really thick, but you want it to completely cover it as it goes in. And these two washers now are going to go here over the hole. And now we're just going to screw this back in. Try not to cross thread the threads that you just made. Okay, don't omit this step or the rocket will be unstable. It needs to have this extra weight in the nose. Okay, now that can dry. While the glue on the nose cone is drying yet, we can finish the assembly of our shock cord. Okay, so remember this is a hybrid shock cord. It has both an elastic end and a Kevlar end here. And the Kevlar end we had previously mounted onto the engine mount. Okay, so for this end we're just going to take and make an overhand knot here in both of them. And pull that through. Now the elastic one is going to want to pull farther. So just kind of balance that out. Tie that down well. And you actually do want to have a, about a, an inch or so, 25 millimeters, um, extending beyond the knot. And that's going to help keep it from coming unraveled. And then just to make sure that it doesn't come unraveled, we're going to put a little dot of glue on that knot. I'm just going to work it all the way around. Um, Kevlar in particular is notorious for coming undone if left to its own devices. It does not hold knots very well. So if you lock it in there like that, then that should keep it good and secure. Okay. Now the other end will go on our screw eye here. All right. And here I'm just going to tie a double knot or two half hitches. For you scouts out there. Okay, go ahead and pull that good and tight. And then just like we did with the Kevlar knot there, we're going to go ahead and put just a little bit of glue on there. Okay, and work that into the knot. Okay, and I'm going to cut the uh, free end there back to about five millimeters, about a quarter inch or so. And that's just so we don't have any chance of it hanging up and getting between the body tube and the nose cone. Okay, and I can just move that over to the side for now. Okay, and then coming back to our parachute here. All right. Um, remember, I put a snap swivel on here, and so this will just open up the snap part, and that will go on here. And this is really the the part that you have to check on your snap swivel. It needs to be big enough to go around that and still move freely. Okay. If it's too small, and you you might get it clipped in there, but it'll be hugging that screw eye so much that you can get it stuck at an angle and that could interfere 
with proper ejection. Okay, now the only thing left for me to do is paint this, and I am not going to do that as part of this video. So as I said, the weather is just not cooperating right now. So the only thing after the paint is simply to put all this together and launch it. So I'm going to call this done. I hope you had a great time building this. Have a safe flight and recovery, and please stay tuned for more of my videos.